sorry. <laughs> Great Nigerian people. Great Nigerian people. Yeah. Comrades and friends, it's my pleasure to be in your midst. And I want to thank the Nigerian Labor Congress and the TUC for inviting me to participate in the cross fertilization of ideas on the workers' charter of demands. If this August Assembly can adopt the workers' charter of demands, you will know that your job is already completed. Because for us as a people, I say it all the time, that Nigeria has no business with poverty. We have no business with frustration. Because this is a well-endowed nation. Other countries are jealous of us. But what have we done with the enormous resources at the disposal of our country? We've listened to wonderful speeches. But may let me respond to one or two issues. This government promised that we're going to migrate from PMS to CNG and 250 billion naira was voted for that and the government said in 2020 that once we migrate most of our vehicles if most of our vehicles can run on gas a liter of fuel will be 94 naira today the government is thinking of increasing fuel price to 500 naira. Comrade President of NSC, and I want to say this here publicly, about seven years ago, the government of Nigeria spent a colossal sum of 50 billion naira to acquire a software by Petroleum Equalization Fund to track, to track and monitor all tankers that load fuel in any part of Nigeria. Today you are being told that Nigerians have to be punished because of the criminal activities of smugglers. I've never heard that anywhere before. That a government will punish its people because of the criminal activities of a few on patriotic elements. We have challenged the government. And we are happy now the Comptroller General of Customs has come out publicly to say that it is impossible, it is impossible to smuggle daily about 38 million liters of fuel. Where would they pass? Because you need tankers and you will need at least 500 tankers loading 33,000 liters of fuel per one. NNPC has said, oh, yes, this is what is going on. Smugglers are responsible. We are also told, and Nigeria is the only country that comes out where the government will say, we are losing $700 million every day because of oil theft. Who are the oil thieves? They know them. Oil theft, oil smuggling, all have official backing. Again, Nigeria is the only oil producing country without, that has not acquired the meter, meter, a meter to know how much oil you produce daily. Nigeria is the only oil producing country that has refused to acquire that meter. Furthermore, there is an organization called Lloyd. That body, and Nigeria subscribe to that body. NMPC subscribes to that body. That body knows and has a record of all ships, all ships that load what 
to any part of the world, Nigeria has access to that body. Yet we are told we don't know who is stealing our oil and where the, the oil is being taken to. Now we did a study, January 2011 to December 2014. We discovered, and we made the information available to the government. Nothing has happened. One port, one port, Philadelphia port in America. The oil that left Nigeria, the charge in that country, the difference between what was recorded here and what was recorded there was 62.5 million barrels of crude oil valued at $12.7 billion. One pot. So if you take 20 pots in America, 20 in China, United Kingdom, France, you know what we are talking about. So the government knows, and if they want information, we can make it available to the government. If they are actually looking for those who are stealing our oil and those who are smuggling our oil, because this year, please, 2020 budget, 2022 budget, the government, this government claimed that we are going to spend 443 billion naira on so-called fuel subsidy. By June, President Buhari took, told the National Assembly a supplementary budget that increased the 443 to 4 trillion naira. No debate. The National Assembly did not debate and passed it. Now the Minister of Finance is saying, Mrs. Ahmed Zainab, that before the end of this year, that figure of four trillion will go to 6.5 trillion naira. And that therefore, in the budget of next year, there may be no money for capital project. Please, I challenge you. I challenge labor in particular we must get to the root of this criminality, once and for all. <laughs> Labor must decide today. We must decide today. We must set up a committee, NSCTUC. I will be ready to make information available to expose the criminals behind smuggling of wealth, criminals behind oil theft. Finally, for the past several months, our children have been home because the government is not prepared to implement the agreement it signed in 2009, in 2019, and 2020. Let us also resolve that enough is enough. Our children must go back to school, and this body Labor, our Nigerian Labor Congress and TUC can compel this government to reopen our universities. I was very reluctant to come here to speak because, uh, as Fidel Castro once did, he went to America and they asked him to speak. He said, I don't want to offend a powerful enemy in his own territory. Let me challenge the leaders of the Labour Party, I beg you. You aren't going to get power in Nigeria by adopting the methods of the bourgeoisie. If you want to mobilize the Nigerian people, you must go beyond visiting those who destroy Nigeria. From today, your candidates must go to the offices of all the trade unions in Nigeria. The offices of women organizations, youth organizations, because the people you are competing with, please notice, have acquired a bet illegally unbelievable sums of money. And what do they want to do? They want to bribe voters because they have weaponized poverty. 
Therefore, you cannot operate on the same terrain. If you, and the president of NIC and TEC have made the point that you have the largest structures in Nigeria. Please go out from today to revitalize those structures so that these guys can know that they can never be business as usual in Nigeria again. Time is on our side. Oh, yes. Because Nigerians have lost faith in them. They are now running from pillar to post. When they say you have no structure, tell them the people are the structures of power. The people are the centers of power. Power is lying on the street in Nigeria once again. You don't know. The man in Asorok says, I am tired, I want to go home. Those who want to take over power from him, they are also tired, you know that. Therefore, power is lying on the street of Nigeria. Are you ready to pick it? Yeah.